Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and pool fans from around the world to the 24th annual Derby City Classic here at Caesars Southern Indiana, just outside of Louisville. Right in front of me is a beautiful 5 by 10 super tight, just over 4 and an eighth inch size pockets diamond table. This table separates the men from the boys. And ladies and gentlemen here at Derby City, are you ready for some high class pool? I know that they're ready. We've started with 16 of the greatest players on the planet. Well, we have just one more spot to find out who makes the Elite Eight. And let's go on and meet him right now. First up, he's a world nine ball champion, US Open champion, and he's also the defending champion of the Bigfoot 10 ball challenge. He's sponsored by Predator, Andy Cloth, Gabriels, and How Tips from Bach Bong Hanif, Germany, the killer, Joshua Filler. And his opponent is a seven-time Pan American Junior Champion. He's sponsored by Mez Exceed and Kamui from Caracas, Venezuela, the Golden Boy, Jesus Atencio. <laughs> Our referee is Ricky Bryant and sending it up to the Skybox and Mark Wilson. Hello, pool fans from around the globe. We have world-class 10 ball and world-class analysis by Jeremy Jones. I'm Mark Wilson. Jeremy, talk a little bit about Jesus Atencio. Well, he's a tall right-hander, great build for the game, uh, possesses a lot of power, really incredible stroke in my opinion. Huge upside, he hails from Venezuela, spends a lot of time in America, more in the south, but goes all over playing pool and really looking for, you know, one of those deep, deep runs in a big event. Uh, he's certainly had some nice regional wins and I wouldn't doubt that you know, he's had a win over Joshua somewhere along the lines uh, before. Maybe not, but um, just a great player. And I think I was saying it to you right before we came on the air. I kind of expected him to have a little bit more of a bigger run in a huge event uh, by now. But, you know, pool's a funny game. This is how it goes sometimes. Of course, Josh Filler, his, his name speaks for itself in the pool world. The last probably six years-ish. When I first saw him, I think it was the 2016 uh, U.S. Open, the last one that Shane won. Josh put him on the loser side before Shane, Shane trucked right through the one loss side to win his last green jacket. Race to 11. The 10 ball does not win on the break. And really, I think Jesus is a lot like Tyler Steyer as far as like very, very good fundamentals in my opinion and has no weaknesses, almost always figures out the break, jumps the ball as well as anyone, moves the cue ball as well as anyone. And, you know, it's hard to argue with straight shooting as well. Great break there. No, I mean, he really possesses a lot of power. And like I said, I think the proper build for pool, not too, too tall, but very long, mm -hmm. you know, around six foot. Well, the Brick Demon has that at 19.3, but it was such a square hit, I guess it seemed like it was harder than that. Because, boy, he got a lot of ball action there. And it yeah. was one of the first times we saw the ball right behind the one ball drift into the side pocket cleanly. We haven't been seeing that much. Well, I think we'll see it plenty again. And the t a technique that we talked about, um, or I talked about with you before the match, the contrasting styles and, and the technique between these two, Josh, Really a little more of a gripper of the cue in the back. Not like really hard, of course. And he's never going to squeeze it, squeeze it. But Jesus stays very light. And you'll actually see him kind of throw the cue with the backhand. Like many players these days do. And I don't know if we'll get a visual on that as the match goes. Usually a stun shot or a follow. Some players draw, throw the cue on draw shots as well. Uh, but most all do it with the stun and the follow that have that type of te technique. I'm <laughs> thinking about going behind his back here over a ball. I mean, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> well, simplify this shot, not only for what's in front of you, but the four is pretty simple as well with the five near. So whatever gets you out between the six, seven. All ball fouls. This absolutely got awkward. Looks like going for a super long extension here, taking his playing extension off. 
And it's used as time extension already. As the clock mm. winds down. We're at nine seconds, eight, seven. Well, I think, yeah. He's, he's got to be down. Oh, he's going to get behind the eight from nowhere. And that's that's maybe the, the, the experience thing. I, I mean, if you, if you recognize where the four was at, that's... <laughs> That's where I would really, even if you just had to roll over between the 10-8 maybe, I don't know, but that's a big unforced error there, and the clock got our first player, I think. Well, when he when he went fast and then he hit the ball heavy and then all that top and side, it just warped and took all the momentum out of the mass. Yeah, and I backed it up with a, a, a bit of an error there with the kick shot and surrendering ball in hand to... One of the top three players in the world, that's for sure, in my opinion, anyways. 25 years old, Joshua Filler. Now, Josh, interesting that he won a big tournament. I can't remember. I think it might have been his world nine ball with the, the black shaft from Predator. But then he went right away from it, went like the wood better and uh, has played several years now with the wood, and this is the first time I've seen him with back with the black shaft in his hand. Uh, I would guess since about the beginning of 2019, maybe 18 even. His world championship took place in China, and my goodness, what a place, and he was like 22 or 21 when the he The world won. nine ball did? Uh, didn't it? Qatar, I thought. I thought uh, it was Qatar. Uh, well, then maybe. Uh, he won the Chinese Open. Or Chinese something. Open, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But China Open, saying, China Open, yeah. Okay, but what I'm saying is it's basically a world tournament for the quality of the oh, people absolutely. That were there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. He was like 21 or 22. It was incredible. The litany of bodies he left in his wake. Well, I'm not sure. I have to look back and just not being around as many tournaments at that time, especially the ones overseas, but. I think he held the World Nine Ball title when he went in and won the, the first U.S. Open that was in Vegas there away from Virginia and a tester here because yeah. I don't know if he can go forward if the eight passes the ten or not. That's how he'd like to shoot it. But I think he held both titles at one point. Uh, and then, of course, that, that great final he played against uh, Wu, was it, in the U.S. Open? That unfortunate foul that Wu had. Ooh, a rare miss on that type of shot, especially. We'll see if he goes forward here, Mark. See the tip position, only reason being, I think he's going, all right, he's going forward. Watch the backhand and watch how much he throws this cue. You see that? Oh, yeah. About five, six inches. He's got one of the bigger tosses of the queue that I've ever seen, actually. Niels has a big one. Albin has a big one as well. But the bigger the speed of the shot, they create a little more momentum, which creates a little bigger throw. Yeah, he does it, I think, as well as anyone that ever has. Seems like the queue stays very straight, which, you know, I was telling you about the Coe brothers, what they think about that. Just once the hand comes off, there really is hard to make a mistake with the cue stick. Mm hmm. And rack one goes in. Tencio. Josh Filler will be breaking in rack two. A chance to tie things Couple up. Couple turn of events there in the opening rack. Unforced error by Atencio. And then yeah. kind of a tough shot for Josh to try to manipulate the cue ball, get positioned on the, what was it, the eight ball on the side. Was yeah. it nine ball, whatever it was, the last three balls. So, yeah, and hey, you know, Jesus has become a very much a professional player and has matured and gained a lot of experience. But after what looked like a simple, you know, with the rush of the shot clock and snookering himself, I think that's a huge error by Josh to settle Jace, uh, Jesus a little bit. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Even though it's still only rack number one, but if Josh gets out there breaks and runs here maybe or wins the second game. I think a lot of heat on Jesus to start and a dry break after a huge mistake in game one. Jesus definitely one of those guys 
if uh, whoever's in his corner, just keep reminding him how great he is. And, and that doesn't mean as far as like build an ego, mm-hmm. but I'm talking about really in the playing side of things, how much he can handle out there on the table. Doesn't always have to get perfect with the cue ball. And you were talking about how maybe it would be important if he had another elite pro travel in his company to kind of assist him mentally too, right? Absolutely. I mean, if you're looking to get better in any, anything you're doing, you don't want to be the best in your car, right? <laughs> you you want to be the one learning. So, I mean, it hasn't been uh, like right there, a little draw stun, right? He still throws the cue even though he's drawing it. Some of them don't. But most of the guys that have been great players have had some type of uh, help, right, from another top great player of some sort. Or at least maybe a collaboration of yeah. several players helping you. You know, I was very lucky like that. Nick Vonners and, of course, Buddy Halls and Johnny Archers and all kinds of guys that would lend some information back in the day. Yeah, hard to be a loner and travel alone, to, especially to foreign countries and, and make it all work out and then stay positive mentally. Well, and I think especially for a guy that has the upside to be a top five or ten player in the world, you know, that that this is his career, this is what he wants to do the rest of his life, I think that uh, giving in to someone else for a little while would pay a lot, a lot of dividends. And the thing is, technique-wise, yeah, I don't think he needs hardly any help. It's just keep making it better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the good thing. It's more about the experience side of things and – and sometimes, you know, players can kind of teach you how to win without really making that the goal, uh, you know, trying to teach you how to win. It's just something that just kind of rubs off. And you can see he moves the cue ball easily. Very straight stroke. Kind of reminds me of a young Rodney Morris back in the day. You yeah. Know, kind of that flamboyant, uh, I'm not afraid, <laughs> I'll gun you down from anywhere. Yeah, and Rodney was actually a bit longer with this swing back in the day. Now, when you don't play much, sometimes it, it does shorten and up. Shorten up. I think Rodney's starting to play a little bit now, though. Wouldn't be surprised if he was in the nine ball here. Straight back draw, one rail out. Is that what we got going on here? Yeah. Just a hint of the wrong angle, so he just cinched the angle and took the long position. Yeah, and not to harp on his technique too much, but the good thing about that type of technique is you're really not trying to make impact happen. You know, your hand's off the cue, right? A lot of people squeeze at impact, trying to hit side spin, make yeah. draw happen, whatever it is. He's always rotating the cue ball away, no matter if it's a light spin. Well, that one, a little, little heavy there. A little light with the speed, but if you miss it, you want to make sure you miss it over cutting it. Well, he well, didn't stay down as long as he normally does. I've watched Jesus a ton. Just kind of pulled the trigger a little quicker than the normal once he finally got down on the ball. Hmm. <laughs> Filler. Just effortless ball pocketing ability. Yeah, he's pretty cold from distance, I'll tell you. Firepower supreme. And more likely to miss that type of shot early in the match than he would late in the match. That's what's even more impressive, I think. Yeah. I, I, I was talking to him one time, and he was talking about being a boy and going to the pool room. And just instinctively, right away, he could pocket balls. And, like, older guys were trying to play him and stuff. And he was just he, – he wasn't experienced, but he could just shoot better than they can, yeah. you know. Just, yeah. 
And a lot of times I say there's no such thing as natural ability, but if there is, I think he's the one that got it because I've never seen anything like it, with the exception of Jason Shaw. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think there's a lot of guys in the room with a lot of great natural ability, but, you know, just sometimes As we people just... As we head into three, would, all you know, tied up, one game or, apiece. He was 15, Jesus 16, I break. turned 16 this week, Brady, but... He had some friends over last week, and they were playing pool, and this one of his friends just kind of knew where to aim at the ball without really ever hardly playing. It just kind of made sense to him. Hmm. Now, he didn't know how to stroke the ball or anything like that, but when he got down on it, he pointed in a great direction quite often. And uh, I don't recall being able to do that when I first started. Big breaker. He's got a lot of power. Snowball got away. Yeah. You wouldn't figure you got to play a perfect match against Josh, but you probably can't afford <laughs> yeah. any extras. You better extras. play pretty close to it. Yeah, you can't give him any extras. That's the main thing. All right, he's going to spin off this a couple rails. One thing Jesus has got to look forward to, he made three on the break. He had a really nice break in the first game as well. He's going to slide up between the 6-7. I think, anyways. And the good thing about Josh on all these shots, right, is he rarely puts side. And not saying, you know, it's wrong to put side because most of us would put a hint. Um, but what happens is he never has to baby the ball like going up that side rail right there mm -hmm. because he's not afraid of the spin taking him away from his position. So he, he uses a certain kind of heavy hit on the object ball and, uh, and again, gets to always be pretty aggressive with the stroke because of the least amount of side as possible. Pool calendar is these days, Mark. Uh, my concern for some of these players is when do they schedule their break, and you know what do they do? Because you don't want to get burned out. You know, you make, mm -hmm. you, you make little Head breaks throughout the year so breaking. you can clear the mind. You know, enjoy yourself a little bit. Forget about the game for you know whatever it may be a week or whatever. But I, th I think it's the way the schedule in pools. It's a great thing, but you got to manage it pretty well. Yeah, I don't even think it is much. Well, maybe it's some half the pool, but it's just the hardship of travel, too. It really takes a toll on you. No, absolutely. That's it's a big part of it. Getting through airlines and putting up with all their nonsense of cancellations, stay an extra night here or there, maybe get there. Where's your queue when you get there? Well, you know, they talk about, you know, air traffic controllers being the most stressful job in the world, right? Like one of the hardest jobs because of the stress. Well... When you're a competitor, it's fun and all, but you're still stressing. It's a different type of stress, maybe. Right. But it's a very stressful, uh, can wear on you. Easy to think you're spinning your wheels at times, you know? Look at that one ball hang. Holy moly. You know. What's, look at the overhead here. I like, see. what's that hanging on to? Okay, so I'm just going to tell you. These are four and an eighth inch pockets, but it's plus or minus a sixteenth. So we went around and measured all the pockets the other night, and that is the tightest one on the table. Oh, okay. Th this one here. And we saw a ball last match hang up here, too. And it's deep. You know, and, the deep shells. It, it right? looked like it was going to wiggle on down like we're used to seeing, but Yeah, the not. kick on the two, right? right? Yeah, from John Mora. Funny little shot here. Like the slow draw, maybe, and just take the cut on the two. Maybe even play the two all the way down the corner. Right? Maybe, maybe, yeah. The, the least what you can get, you can get hurt with this shot. Yeah, he was just playing it long. Okay, he's got to make a heck of a shot here as well, and the cue ball is not so natural. It looks like it goes by the nine, maybe at the eight. That would be okay. The three does pass the ten. If you hit the nine with this, which I don't think you will, but if you do, it's a problem. Yeah, I think it goes into the eight. Oh, it did uh, catch. Oh, well, you overcut well, it, it as well, so yeah. hard to judge off of that. 
And I'll, I'll be honest with you. When you get out here on these tight pockets on the TV table playing filler, sometimes a ball like that can look like you're looking down the <laughs> flight deck of an aircraft carrier. <laughs> you know, just a little tiny thing down there you're trying Watch to hit. A nice little straight drag here. Maybe a hint of outside. Much more of a stroke shot. Something you don't see Shane do very often is the drag shot, the heavy drag from mm -hmm. distance. He'll do them when he's close, and it's not much of a drag, but the, it just doesn't agree with his technique quite as much. Very hard to control where the two, cue ball turns over uh, and becomes follow without mm -hmm. going through the cue ball with the cue stick. So between the 710 here, two rails. Oh, oof. That was close. And this is going to sneak up on the nine. Yeah, that was. Huh. I'm still very curious about the change in equipment and, and where it may at times, you know, um, have a little question mark for, for Josh. Yeah, we don't even know how long he's been back with the carbon fiber, so. Well, I don't think it could have been too long, but you know he's put in tons of hours before coming over here and playing this big event. A good effort there. Now, Jesus needs to take advantage. <laughs> Filler packs them in here. Look at the capacity crowd. Jesus is a little out of sorts early because those are not balls he misses. This is going to be okay as long as it doesn't get over the nine. Now he is lefty, so he's going to be able to reach it. <laughs> if he was righty, he'd be in trouble. Did you say over the nine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah, couldn't hardly put it there with your hand any better. This is real tough because now you, it's hard to get position, too. Well, you hate to have to shoot hard. He's going to hit it light, I think, is what yeah. he's going to do. Yeah, and then so. super fine cut the seven. I mean, this is he is trying brutal. to get down on this? Oh, he must have a little. Look at this shot. Wow, he was actually trying to go forward with some speed. He's thinking about cutting this in, Mark. The way he's cueing the uh, the route of the cue ball, that looks like yeah. off the left side of the six, which would be attacking most likely. A uh, real quick backswing there. A little quicker than his normal. Well, this would be a pretty shot here. Not much reward unless you pop down on it, but... I think he he's gonna overcut it and run. Yeah. Except, you know, you can also hit it heavy and just lay it on the side rail over there by the seven. You can just if you can get it past the side pocket. Yeah, this is that center of the end rail though. You need to get there from all kinds of angles. It usually agrees with the object ball as well. Now, he let up a little bit again. No yeah. big deal, though. He was really concerned about the six, right? Right. Super quality. And uh, if he banks this in and gets out, then you just shake his hand and not worry about it. But that was the best percentage play was this. Well, I'll tell you, he may go at that with the eight and nine there as a little cover. And speed's going to be okay. The cross side's covered up. So another safety, most likely, from the German Josh Filler. That's surprising. 
I understood banking at it, making sure you hit it thick, but not on the thinner side of things. But right, He's got a kick to the short rail here right underneath the six. May pocket it in that corner. That's what he's looking at. And if he can hit it medium, maybe he brings the cue ball up that left side rail behind the eight. Just like that. How'd he hit it, Mark? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you see how he didn't overhit it, and the cue ball still acted like draw coming off yeah. that back rail, and the six was about a diamond up. So that just kind of shows you how far that cue ball keeps that spin, even bouncing off that cushion. But real good control. I mean, a little fortunate still to kick it in, but you could see he had some safety options in mind. And it doesn't work like that with worn cloth. It takes brand new cloth to hold that spin so you can kick a ball and stick it from a diamond or better away. Right. Could maybe have real slick pool balls, maybe real cleaned up. That helps a little bit, I think. But, mm -hmm. yeah, the newer felt is what really helps it. Yeah, it has to be low friction. Yeah. Whatever we do. That's more of that clean stroke I'm used to seeing from him. Right in the middle he uses a lot at medium speed. And a lot like Fetter Gorse, not only gaining a lot of fans just because how great he is, that being a filler. I think a lot of these fans are wondering when they're going to see something to, that they're going to talk about, you know, for the next 40 or 50 years or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Somebody shooting a 1,000 on this 10-footer with the 4 and 8-inch pockets. And Back on the board at 10 2-2. So we head into rack 5. Jesus will have the break. It'll be a short player timeout. We will be back. 2-2 Two -two is our score. Atencio and Filler. We have not seen the best of play from both players yet here early stages. Filler's 25 years old. Jesus Atencio, 24 years old. And both players have been out, or been around for a while too. They're young in age, but uh, long in experience. High level pool. Yeah, these two will be beating each other for some time. Scratch on the break in his last. Can't afford any more of those, you would think. That was a good square hit. <laughs> Yeah, ball good. right behind the one found the pocket. One ball's going to dribble in. He's got a shot on the two, though. Long distance. Probably a high ball here coming a couple rails around, maybe for the three in the side. He may come across with draw. We'll see. It's a little funny both ways, I think, forward or backwards. Straight draw here. Yeah, it's just timing's off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Usually holds the pause at the cue ball a little longer than that. Might be going a little bit of right hand, yeah, yeah a little right hand yeah. spin just to 
to get this type of a result where you get greater separation and then maybe introduce the eight ball and the ten ball in the play? Well, the key to that is the high ball with the right, mm -hmm. and then you don't have to let up on it. And the right will take the, the high ball will kind of create a hydraulic a little bit as well. Really helps the shot get pulled off, you know, to where you do get that separation. And really nice kick there. Kick, stick, return. That was good. And of course, these players, they spend time kicking at the ball and studying it. It's all about increasing your percentages. Never like 100%. Like here, coming across. That's all about speed. Good separation. Yeah. If he hits the top side, the speed's right to separate. If he hits underneath, the speed's right to separate. The only one that hurts is when he catches it right on the on the button, right? And hits the two very full. Real nice safety and kick exchange going on here right now. Is it too much to go between the 10-8 and bend the ball with right back at the two? Is that too much? Otherwise, he's got to go, I think, to the right side of the table. I think that's what he was looking at. Yeah, he's been in around the three the other way. Oh, no, he, 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 he shot it the way we were talking about. It was too much at that speed. I think if yeah. you go softer, you can get the more grab on the rail. Yeah, just like we talked about yesterday, I think it was, that when you're coming off that rail, even with the two, a good almost two diamonds up, you're going to get enough speed to get the separation. Maybe mm -hmm. he was trying to just create some luck, maybe trying to fluke a ball in or something. Yeah, he saw the 10 ball was there. He thought the 2 could go off the 10 as well. Right. Hard not to swing at it a little bit, but, of course, securing the hit, most important. And like for me and Mark up here in this booth, hindsight is always twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah. You want to make things happen and create it, but sometimes it you know forces you into making taking on too much that was unreasonable to go at that speed and assure yourself of a hit just gonna take a look at the 610 into the side what's that look like do I like it do I want to try to run out And try to run out, draw back. It shouldn't contact the ten, I don't think, anyways. Yeah, you can go forward. Needs a good speed control here, is all. Mm -hmm. The only reason being, he'll probably broaden the ball a little bit. That's what Josh does. I wouldn't be surprised if he brings it all the way to where the kind of the cue ball's at now. Got to be careful with the 10 if he's coming in tight. Oh, and, and that's the thing. When you're worried about the speed control, that's where you sometimes don't, don't really, you know, let it out a little bit, be a little freer with the swing and... Mm -hmm. and it, and He's he, a fast player anyway, yeah. and he didn't, I mean, his rhythm was not very good on that. The, the whole way, he was just kind of a short, no pause, half back swing. Well, I'm that's open. what I mean. Like, it's almost like he was trying to control the speed of the cue ball more than just let his ability control the speed, that being the swing of the cue. So The stroke says, I'm hoping it goes in. Well, these guys are struggling here early, maybe as much struggle between two players as we've seen early in a match. It is late, of course. These guys have been playing the banks all day. So. Oh, pure hit there. Yeah, this he shot, does that a lot. This shot, too, will require a pure hit and probably the 10 ball afterwards. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be anything easy here. I think he'll cue down here, though. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, he'll he'll cue down. If he can bridge nice, he'll cue down with straight draw, not really inviting it. Much side spin, of course, but he doesn't mind this shot. Just play the 10 on the yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. He wanted to make sure he got that ball down without worry about trying to get the cue ball off that long rail over there because he knows he can roll this in from anywhere once he gets over there. Just make sure you get the 9 ball down. 
And game number five will go to Filler, who now leads three games to two. And Filler regains the lead. And really, I mean, if you ever kind of wanted, Tomorrow you, know, you don't think about this when you're playing a guy like Feature Filler, matchup. If you ever Feature thought about, Shane Van Boning oh man, and what Jason kind of start Shaw would I want him to, to have? Find out who goes well, if you're Jesus, you've had the start the from Filler world. you want. Mm -hmm. It hasn't He's been that good so far for right. as far as Filler's right. concerned. He just right. is, hasn't backed it up just yet. Jesus hasn't. He's made you know, a small handful of mistakes himself. Square yeah, hit. very square. The ball behind the one ball went in the side. The sixth ball that was. And Filler is presented with a good scoring opportunity here. The one ball's only two feet from the cue ball straight in. Now Josh, a lot of times, he doesn't mind playing the shot off the two where he goes one, two, three rails between the seven, five, and then drops between the four, three. You see the angle he just did his cue stick? That's a ball all about the two ball. So I think he's going to just draw back maybe two, three inches is what I'm guessing. And then, like I said, go two rails between the seven, five, and then, and then drop the cue ball off the third rail between the four, three for position on the red three. He likes this shot, uses it a lot because it agrees with a lot of TV tables, mm -hmm. uh, Mark, you know, and he plays in a lot of TV matches, I'll tell you, this guy does. Now he's got to dig down a little bit, and it's easy uh, from this third rail to go into the three a little bit heavy, too. Yep. Yeah, but there's not a ton that can go wrong. I mean, you could end up bouncing it on top of it, right. but, I mean, as far as a ball snookering you or something, felt pretty good about it. It's right. still the easiest route to get there. Yeah, you just, yeah, if yeah. You, if it miss, you know, when you land on the three, which was very likely from the direction he was coming, then... You just have to defend yourself. Is he drawing this out? Low right? Oh, okay. boy. What a nice And shot. I was looking right down the line of that, and he did use a little side, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. But he had enough angle with, like, a tip of right to follow to the side rail behind the eight and out to the middle easily. Kind of curious why he went that path instead. Overhit this. <laughs> that makes the rest of the rack play hard. He went two feet too far. He did not need to get it on this. Well, he had to work hard to get it off angle. Can he, he can beat it, though. He can beat the seven, I think. Straight draw again. Maybe a hint of right. Or left, rather. Yeah. Josh in a rare situation without uh, his biggest fan in the room watching, Pia Filler. She's off in Atlantic City at the Ladies World Nine Ball Championships. Or World, is it World Nine Ball or Ten Ball over there? Uh, nine Ball. Nine Ball, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. The Women's Worlds, I yeah. saw they got down to 16 players today. Yeah. Um, the Koch just beat uh, Jasmine Ocean earlier. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. To get into the quarters. Not sure who else is left. Now Filler with a two-game lead. A nice break and run from Filler. That was break and run a out there. Two-game lead now, and Jesus First will have the break. match. As we head to rack seven. That's just what I would be worried about too. If I was uh, Jesus, is that you don't want him making balls on the break and get untracked and get yeah. his back as good rhythm like he started off a little sluggish. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Some position stuff, you can beat Filler sometimes tactically on some situations if you're a good t tactical player because he's not mm -hmm. bad or anything. You know, just the, mm -hmm. the best guys get a little the best of them at times there. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you get three or four open miss shots from Filler in a match, you oh. gotta, you got you to gotta be pretty thankful there and feel like uh, yeah. that's put me in position to, to maybe steal a match from, from right. the young champion. So. Right. Yeah, he's... He's had an abundance of misses compared to what we can oftentimes see him play through the whole match. Look at how cue ball. Good. Yeah, and that's the thing that very much like Tyler as well. 
Uh, Jesus possesses the type of technique, especially on the break, to where he can fly the cue ball past the sides mm -hmm. pretty easily. Like right there, that didn't look like he really unloaded. No. And he got, thank thankfully for him, he flew it past the side or else it would have hooked right in that side right. pocket. So. Yeah, the uh, break demon says it's 18.7 Yeah, miles but per real hour. square. He got, 18, square. he got 18.6 out of that 18.7, I'll tell you. Now, yeah. rail first isn't bad here to get over for the two ball. I'm not like, sure what else he's looking at. He's powering up. No. Nope. He's, he's trying to get the cut shot. Oh, neat. Yeah, great play. Guaranteed efforts shooting rail first there, with top right and spinning off the end rail over for a little longer shot on the two, but one he could almost stop his ball on. Mm hmm. Yeah, because now it's a tough shot, but also the position doesn't lay very nice. Well, this is what you talk about all the time. If you miss the pocket a little bit, even if you make it on these thin cuts, it can really uh, have a lot to do with the cue ball speed coming back and forth. 5'10", he could actually catch a little piece of the 5 coming across, and he's overcut quite a few of them, actually. That overcut was prompted by trying to get enough pace on the cue ball to get it back, though. As I know, but... To, yeah. well, I agree, but I'm just saying, that one <laughs> wasn't just a miss. He was trying to make sure, and that's the You problem. think he was trying to go 3 back, though? Because, I mean, it was thin. I thought No, two, he, was, he wanted to be here because if he hits it thicker, there's less pace in the cue ball, so... Right. What I, well, I was saying shot. is that... Uh, a shot. That it seemed like there was plenty of angle to move back and forth. He didn't have to really unload on it at right, all. Right, yeah, right. So. No, I'm just saying he overdid it. Yeah, you know, he overhit it, yeah. We've all did it. Which, with help. the slick balls, will make them cut easier. They, you know, We talk about that in Moscone a lot. Out there on that TV table, the balls cut a little easier. And well, that's the stroke when he gets that one in tune. It's pretty scary. Ooh, yeah. Look at how good he hit that. Well, and he barely yeah. uses any side spin, if any, uh, when he's tracking that ball around the table. The killer. There's that long bridge I told you. Since I've met him, it's it's probably added a good five inches at times. And it's not always there, but it's a, it's a little longer than it used to be. I got a pretty good kick out of it. <laughs> Phil Filler told one guy that, you know, he was asking about his training, and he says, well, you know, I play straight pool on this four-inch pocket table, and I try to run 200 every day. And, and the guy says, well, well, how often do you do that? And he goes, well, every day. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. That's pretty good. But he didn't say it bragging. He just said it matter of fact. That's what he tries to get done. He gets that done, then his practice is done. Well, I got to, fortunate to do the make it happen with Filler involved, along with a lot of great players and up in Jersey, of course, with Pat. It was eight ball straight pull and ten ball, I believe. And I was very impressed with, of course, his ten ball, but both his eight ball and straight pull uh, skills. Filler opens up a three game Most everything lead. made sense. He'll be breaking in rack eight. Probably is, you know, I don't have the straight pull knowledge like like Josh, but when he shot a shot, it sure sure made sense to me. Mm -hmm. And now five to two. Yeah, straight pull is a big game in Germany, you know. So they, they have period, leads. Right, I think, well, right? maybe Europe too. Yeah. As far as like, you know, that's one of the games they really kind of make their foundation on. Mm -hmm. Eight ball straight pull European Championships it always has straight pull. It used to, anyways. Well, I mean, you look at Thomas Anger, 400 ball runner, Thorsten oh, yeah. Holman, Ralph Souquet, Oliver Ortman. Yeah, I mean, he's absolutely. One killer after the other. Uh, Ralph Eckert, uh, Filler. I remember when Souquet came over here and said, Yeah, uh, this is the new Wonderkind uh, Joshua Filler. He's going to be the best German player ever. I'm like, Right, right, no way. You know, I mean, like, what are you even talking about? And I just thought he was being gracious, but no. I guess uh, he knew what he was talking about. And that's that hook that Jesus avoided by flying the cue ball past the side in the last uh, break right. off. And ironically, it came right up after we talked about it. There's another German coming, Moritz. He's, <laughs> he's only 18 and sure seems to play great. Moritz Neuhausen. He'll be at the World Championships. Now, why would you follow? Is he going to draw this? Uh, 
I think. I guess he's going to draw, but that's where you could actually... Well, I guess you can't make too much of a mistake doing that. But, or you shouldn't. But I always think broaden the cue ball, right? Like out to the center of the table right there, there's absolutely no way to get the wrong angle. When you draw in tight on top of it, you never know. You could get a little bit more angle on the ball than you wanted. You wouldn't figure a problem, but... Not a whole lot of angle mark. You draw back past the nine. Yeah, you try to stun out to the center a little bit. Or well, it looks to me like you you'd have to really pop it. I think you want to draw back here. Well, a lot of guys would draw back to the in rail and back up. That's that, okay too. That way they get more of a feeling of what's going on. He's stunning out okay. and barely got there. I'll tell you. I mean, he's kind of straight here for where the six is at. And at the stroke, you know, this open layout with the scratch on the break. Right now, we're running at a crucial juncture because Josh has so much momentum, and you can see he's getting his good rhythm back. If you don't cash this one in, if Josh ends up with this victory, it will be a murder to ever try to win this set. It's going to be tough anyway, but you, if, you give, if you don't win this game and if you give it back, Josh will be so emboldened you may never win another game. Yeah, he can stop his ball, just pinch it back an inch or two and definitely have a shot. It's not the greatest. The one thing you can do with that, though, if you do go that route, is kind of cut the six in and go at the seven mildly. It's not the worst. Good shot. Good stroke. Yeah, he's got a big stroke, that's for sure. Wow. Yeah. Made that happen pretty easy. I was worried about the nine getting in the way. I think he had to kind of force it a little bit. Um to create a little, kind of like a little bounce effect off the five to reroute the cue ball just a touch. He's gotten a little funny. <laughs> yeah, a little straight. A little straight, but not straight. <laughs> if it's a little straighter, he could pinch back for the side, no problem. Right. Um, looks like he's going to try and just stun out, or is he going all the way up? Yeah, this is... Uh, Again, you know, we talk about this a lot, you know, and, and pool allows you to do this, but most, you know, it's not about what you want to do a lot of times. When you get mm -hmm. in a situation, it's about what, you know, the ball wants to do itself. Let's talk about angles, and, and, of course, that comes with percentages and whatnot. But that's him kind of trying to, you know, mm -hmm. take over the table a little bit from that angle and trying to – that was a long force from a small angle. On a tight pocket. Yeah, and the Good. seven's a long ways from the pocket as well. And we saw that pocket on a three ball with, uh, was it Conrad? Yeah, yeah. That hit uh, very That's well, right. it seemed like, that, that didn't go. Yeah, he's got the stretch here. That's not too bad. Oh, he wasn't sure when he pulled the trigger. He immediately looked up at that pocket. <laughs> and he 16. did hit it on the high okay, side a did. little bit. <laughs> yeah, he overcut a little bit. Going into Six rack two, nine. my mark. Yeah. Jesus will if you were to break. be critical of Jesus's game, what would, uh, mechanically speaking, what would you say? Mechanically? Mm hmm Uh... I like his fundamental overall. I mean, you know, he's, he's gotten a little quick at times here in this match, which is something he doesn't do very often. Um, do you I, think 10-ball, you know, 10-foot table, Josh Filler, do you think that brings it out of you, though? Yeah, maybe. Right. You know, and, you know, he's a young man. Uh, the way he's had a few things go on with the quick backstroke, a little light pause at times, because I've watched him a ton. Uh, you know, of course, we have similar techniques. He's kind of perfected it, in my opinion, versus I'm still working on it uh -huh. uh, when I do have time. So I watch the guys that throw the cue because I throw the cue as well. Um, but what I kind of feel is maybe he hasn't played as much here of recent is what I'm kind of get a feeling of. Just because, I mean, he doesn't really miss balls, I mean, that much. Uh -huh. He does make some so-so decisions at times with the cue ball. He's still young, right? Yeah. Um, but as far as missing open shots, he just doesn't do much of it. 
you know, it's just coming up the holidays, right? You know, who knows? A lot of us can take a hair of time off during the holidays. Difficult rollout, of course, like it always is. Well, it's just not fun to push out the, the straight shooting Josh Feller. Yeah. And you can't push out trapped either to where he can easily hand it back. sure what he asked there. Yeah, you're going to get the, the worst of all of this. And the good thing is the rail first, he's going to leave him long and straight, and the rail first really doesn't lead towards position with the four covered up a little bit by the five. So I wouldn't doubt if Josh passes this. Wouldn't surprise me at all if he passes it, especially seeing his opponent struggling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's yeah. in the break. Now, this is a circumstance where you might just roll it in and just plan to play safe from the four and just try to hope for that being better than trying to play safe here. Yeah, and the thing about that that has value is that's a lot better than where you started after the break being snookered behind the nine, right? you got to make a nice shot here. Oh, wow, how good he hit that what a pretty first. shot. What a, wow, shot of the match. Yeah, beauty. Real first. Straight high, no side spin. And then it took that velocity to have yeah. a chance to get to the side pocket here for the four. Well, he's got a real powerful stroke, you know, so. See that. You get through the ball like that, and what happens is a lot of people that didn't really pay attention to that shot is when he went rail first, you know how pure he had to hit the cue ball to be able to go through the two to the top rail with a lot of speed? Now here it is, here it is. Yeah, watch it arc right there to get the forward momentum and then around. And I had said the rail first didn't lead towards position, but I didn't think I didn't know he's gonna hit it like he that. He didn't know he could go through that ball so well. Well, he's he's a little funny here. This isn't easy. The six doesn't pass the eight. It's a little awkward. I, I may have to lay him down behind the eight here. I know he wants to bank the ball, but this is very easy to chip the six and put him right behind the eight. Can't imagine a 24-year-old thinking about safety here. I know. That's what I say. I might shoot myself, but I mean. What do you like here, Mark? Hmm. Yeah, I was looking at it. It's not much. Yeah, this is... Uh, I wonder if he's going to try and put the six up on the right side of the rail, kind of out in space a little bit. Hit it kind of thick a little bit on the left side and run the cue ball two rails in the direction of the ten. Maybe you leave him a shot, but a very difficult one if you do. Can you bank the six at the seven and just try to keep him there and to get the cue ball over in the side rail? If Maybe. it's laying like that, that's not too bad. No, that's not too bad. You don't have to sell out with that. And you can go for the bank. You can just play the ball back to your right. He's thinning it. He's going to play. Just edge the ball. He fouled. The jacket. No, it, he, he, he leaned over the ten. Caught the ten with his oh, jacket. Oh, he did? Okay. I did not see that. Yeah, Josh usually wear in the TV arena. A lot of times he'll wear, you know, a hoodie or some type of tight jacket or whatnot. He has another one on here, but it just hung a little bit and caught the ten. I was watching his tip at the cue ball. I didn't even think about looking at the other. Well, the funny thing to me is that he didn't notice right there is Ricky was all like roaming right there, making sure of what was going on, which is his job. But a lot of times that will kind of make the player a little more aware. Oh, yeah. whoa, whoa, I need to, what, what's going on yeah. here? I need to watch what's going on, so. Big shot here. Not 
nothing easy. Looks like he's going to take the cut in on the side. Nice shot. And to get back on the board from 2-2. Two -two. It was four in a row for Josh Filler. Josh to break in game number 10 coming up shortly. I want to mention a few sponsors. Lucasi Q's, q -Tech, Mez, and also Outsville, which is set up here on the edge of the AccuStats Arena. Six games to three the Little Leeds. tracking the two does bank cross side it looks like and he can get easy position on the three in the side I think he goes here could make it in off the seven as well be surprised if he didn't bank at this looks like he's going to play the safety though coming off and coming across that was a little bit uh, sloppy there. Yeah, that was a big mark to miss, wasn't it? He could have buried the ball at the very least. He, he's left an open look now. He's surveying the safety or how to get position, maybe. He can bank the two, one rail in between the six, four, and come off the side rail with the cue ball and just kind of float behind the 10, five. Not too difficult. Of course, he wants to shoot, and I don't blame him. Tough shot, though. Fluke to five, it looks like. Hmm. I guess just play the two down just by the four and let, yeah. try to let the cue ball filter over to the nine. Yeah, I think you can use the eight if you get through it. Oh, he went for the cut, cut shot. He's going to leave a gap, most likely, between the six and eight. And I understand what he was thinking. He was thinking if he hit it thick enough, he probably gets the cue ball more behind the eight and has a little bit of a two-way shot. Yeah. But caught it too thin, and the cue ball took a little different route. Josh, you've got to beware of the six a little bit. Okay, he stayed inside of that. Smart play. Beautiful shot there. Perfect angle. Cue balls away from the rim. Gives him great control. Just stun this over. Got to think of the stretch here, whether he goes forward with the cue ball or back a little bit. 
lefty. I thought he might go more there, but I guess he can reach it pretty easily. All right. 7-3 is our score. Hiller now. runs him out there. And back to that four-game lead. He gains his four-game lead, 7-3. As we head to rack 11. Nice opening shot, positionally speaking, for Filler on that inning. Everything else laid routine. There was not much to say about it. So he stayed right in line. All right, left side of the break box here. Eight ball and the four ball are the balls that find the side pocket when they're going. All right, it hasn't been the break that has caused this four game deficit, that's for sure. Broke the balls over well, uh, overall pretty well. Got a shot here. Everything sets up pretty nice as well. The three has one of the corners and definitely both sides. The two's pretty open getting to the three, so should cut the lead here, Mark. <clears throat> I know he's had a few of these that we say he should have had, but uh, he kind of punched it because he was stretched a little and it hugged. Instead of releasing with the spin, and now he's got to come for the three in the side. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh oh. Did he get past it? He did. Caught the two quite thick to the pocket, though. Yeah, this little off angle probably won't cost him this ball, but it may cost him positionally speaking throughout the rest of the rack. And, you know, Jesus, at, at times whenever there are sticky situations is when, you know, his youth can show up a little bit with a funny decision uh, that kind of magnifies things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, like you said here, he's going to get awkwardly thin. I don't think the six passes the seven. If it does, it's tight. Yeah, and the cue ball's got to travel a long ways. To, even if it was straight in, it's still got to at least yeah. go three rails. Not that that's impossible for these guys. He's banking it, I think. Oh, what a shot. shot. What a recovery shot that was. Good golly. Off angle bank, twist it back, come across. To get a not an easy shot of the six anyway. So he's going to have to shoot his way out of this one. Good. You know, this is a guy that relies on his fastball here. You know, little zigzag shot here. scared me and I'm not afraid of anything. Yeah, he's definitely not taking as much time with the tip paused as he normally does. Uh, definitely a little light there on the nine and quite a few shots, but nevertheless got it down. Jesus cuts the lead. Seems like the seven, last four hour now, so it's but filler will have the break. It's more than a three game lead, but it's only seven four.
Mm, got some rattling around. Ball went down. Zero chance at a shot. Yeah, but not the worst of rollouts because he can two, roll out to a two-row kick behind the one. So he'll roll out just down to the middle diamond probably behind the two and the nine, something like that. I mean, Jesus probably takes on the two-row kick, to be honest with you, but I think anyways you want to roll out about the middle diamond. Wow, he's going to roll out. He's going to roll out for another two-row kick, just kind of separating the eight. Don't think he's jumping this. Huh. Maybe he is. I don't know if he got a two-rail kick. Did, did he, he forget that jump cues aren't allowed? <laughs> huh? I don't, I don't know if he got the gap for the two-rail. or I'm surprised he didn't roll out by that middle diamond behind the nine. It leaves a real nice two-rail kick that, mm. you know, most players are going to take on, but they don't have to execute it perfectly. <laughs> this is a mistake that, you know, savvy veteran players do not make this type of a mistake because now you subject yourself to an unforced error, giving a ball in hand when it wasn't necessary. Yeah, if he swerves this between them to get that two-rail kick, he may not get a rail. Yeah, there's no speed. Yeah. Yeah, this is, well, this is a mistake of, uh, you know, inexperience, I would say. Yeah, bent on him. How often those guys miss the kick like that. And it's such a huge mistake because look at the two, how ugly it is to surrender ball in hand on a rollout, right? Right. Uh, it'd be way better to miss the ball, uh, you know, shooting at it somehow than yeah, absolutely. would be to push out and then have to try to kick for safety and foul. You can't win, but you can lose. Uh, Tensio's looking at going into him here. Two cushions. Yeah, this is dangerous, too. You can hit him and still not get a shot, but I guess that's the best of what he has because there's not many choices. Nice. That's all you could do. Imagine that Josh misplayed two shots and then left a Jesus so tough that this is actually an okay result as having to play safe after you pocket a ball with ball in hand. All right. That's a miracle. Have that all happen. Just kind of get away a little bit. Josh can hit this pretty full, kind of slowly coming at the nine with the cue ball, letting the two bank two rails below the ten. Maybe you get a little jelly roll here with the snooker. Oh, he went off that side of it. Nice shot. Boy, you're not kidding. That is a yeah, fine hit nice from shot. where he was at. He may have left an edge on the two, I don't know, between the 6-8. It's close. No, that camera angle tells us he's definitely snookered. Boy, that was a dandy shot there. That was tough. It was that thin. And then he misses the kick, so... Hmm. See how Josh plays this. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Yeah, the, I think he sets up above the nine and pulls the ball two rails, being a lefty, shooting the, shooting the two in the corner I where see. the cue ball's at now. I Let's think. grab the overhead if we can here real yeah. quick. And and are, are you saying play the, the two ball in the corner and have the cue ball go here? No, where he's at now, above the nine. See, and oh, swing here. at two and rails. Swing at that same, same path, pa same path but you. natural power, a little easier natural power, you. yeah. Or easy power, let's say that. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, good call and just a whisker short. And right off angle for the bank as well. Yeah. He was so worried about not only getting snookered, but maybe getting over the four also, like dead jacked up over the four. Hmm. And well, now what? This is tough. <laughs> I think he's playing safe. Yeah, definitely. Boy, you hate to take ball in hand and one ball later have to play safe beyond that one. Yeah, it was a tricky one, though. They were 
were checking to see if the three ball was frozen, but there's no chance that something's not going to get a different rail on this shot. Look at this. That's how you want to hit it when it's froze oh, like that. Trying of, to hit it full. A little bit unfortunate. Cue ball still spinning. Just that little shot there. Just cheated the pocket a little bit to make sure the cue ball wasn't frozen to the side rail. It gives you an indication how straight that was. Made that look nice, real pretty. Very clean hit on that ball. A little high left. Just going to the center of the table here. No, he's going to kick out Josh. He wins a game playing real fast all the way around the table, and then he goes racing to his chair like, <laughs> you know, like what, the referee's got a rack here. Yeah, he's he wants on a to mission. Come, come back a cup, or he has to come over. Okay. Couldn't tell exactly how much angle he has. And I still don't think he's in total tune with his timing. You know, just a little bit. Um, not every shot, of course, but just not not, not as great as uh, I'm used to seeing from Josh. Just, you know, shot in, shot out. Four game lead, eight to four. 835. Miller inching closer. The TPA. Eight four now. And Jesus will be breaking. Well, the winner of this match will go on to play Yashishin tomorrow night at 9.30 p.m., late shift. But we got a serious day of action tomorrow, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. It starts right off with Van Boning and Shaw. Then the next match is Gorst versus Gomez, 7 o'clock tomorrow night. It'll be Lee Van Corteza versus Fortunsky. And then the last match will be the winner of this one versus Conrad Yusheshin. Yeah, you post, what is that, 675, the TPA for Atencio at yeah. the moment? Yeah, usually against Filler, you're, uh, you're already at the restaurant getting some food for the 675. <laughs> but if you could stomach to eat after yeah, right. the blistering you took. Right. Those balls all got some kisses right there in the center. It really didn't open like we've seen from Atencio, and I'm not sure if the two plays or not. I think it does, maybe. It's close. Yeah, when you have to get your chin down on the table like that, it's not going to be fun. No, the good thing for him is the three's near, mm -hmm. as far as the angle especially. He just needs to get nice and close to the two, it seems. No, oh, that's not the angle he wants. Now he has to cut the ball. And I'm wondering what he was thinking. Maybe it doesn't go or, or he just tried to force getting close enough to. I thought he'd roll. He had a lot of angle on that one ball. And there's a very small gap between the four and eight. And I don't think he can kill it. Uh, I think he's going out to the middle. I think he's going to go to the middle of the tape. Oh, oh wow. I see. Yeah, well, he added right so, spin to that yeah. as well. So. Now accuracy becomes an issue because of the squirt. You don't have much margin of error. He tried to do a lot on that shot. That was, well, it just wasn't there. Yeah, you wonder how Josh wants to play this. He could bump it in and go past the eight. Just a little rolling ball. Okay, just stayed there. Nothing wrong with that. He's got enough angle to go forward if he wants for the four on the side by the eight. He can come back with the cue ball as well. Probably just back for the four in the corner. 
like this. That way you can just Ooh, stop on the on real the controlled. Five, yeah, like that, that the economy of motion that contributes to consistency. So good call there. Less is more. Well, this got a little weird. And that's what I meant. I just haven't seen all of it from Josh just here and there. Yeah. Like, you know, the timing was definitely off there. He wanted to get another six inches or so off the rail with the cue ball. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Well, he's kind of looking yeah. at every shot like he's yeah. not as sure what's happening after contact sometimes. Yeah. And not so much missing the ball, but the cue ball, you know. This like, isn't that fun here. You know. And the thing is, like I said, he's uh, it has to be fairly recent that he changed equipment. Um, It'd be interesting to hear what he has to say. Well, you know, like I said, he won a big tournament. Uh, I think it was the Worlds with the Black Shaft and went away from it because he liked the wood better for certain shots. And, uh, yeah, but theoretically this is a different Black Shaft too, so maybe he's... You would think. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's still Predator. That's who he's with, so... Well, he scrambled through these despite the struggles, positionally speaking, with good shot making. Man, hey, Susie, go back and look at this match and see Baby how many games nine you really to four now. got to the table mm -hmm. in a, it, not a winnable manner always, but a decent manner at least, and, uh, and lost some games behind it. our rack track they split the first four and four in a row for for filler Jesus has won two out of the last five but that clip's not going to get it got to put a run together himself to to keep his head above water in this Bigfoot challenge two and four behind the rack Something went in. I didn't see which one that was. Is That's usually the second shot. ball off the rack, right? Yeah, and he made the eight ball off the last. bottom of the bottom row. Ball from the corner. Well, question is push out or kick, or push out to a better kick. I think you can see the edge now. Maybe. You're too young to have played two-shot row out on every ball, aren't you? I played it once yeah. in a gambling match, okay. and that was it. <laughs> we played that way for years and years and years, and then switched to this. But your push-out game got pretty darn good. Because <laughs> yeah, you right. do it every rack. You know, just about every rack. Uh, pretty perfect hit on the one there. It really was. Good speed. It ended up working out great. You don't know for sure that it's going to end up like that. You just know that you got a good chance for it to end up tangled up over there. Uh, that's making something happen from nothing. Yeah, is he going to get behind the nine? How cold would this be? It'd be pretty cruel. It looks pretty cruel from here. Now you got to kick in one, two cushions. Or maybe one cushion, I guess. I think he's got a piece of it. I don't know if he can bank it, maybe. I don't, I don't know what he can do with it, but... Sometimes there's not a lot of future, even if you could see it, right? Uh, nice shot. Even if he doesn't get mm -hmm. the snooker, a really nice hit on the two. No, for sure. That 
yeah, that's the best you could do from there. Anything you do from how ugly that was that doesn't result in a like a effortless shot, then that was not bad. A nice rolling ball hit by Josh. Now this is just that funny angle, <laughs> Jeremy. You you hate this because it's you can oh, you can't do much at all positionally speaking. You have to make a hard shot to get to a hard shot. He stunned follows pretty darn oh, well though. Brutal. Yeah, just brutal. He makes a great shot, <laughs> you know, to get to a tough shot, and then hooks himself. Almost almost couldn't happen, but it does. Taking a moment here to kind of see if he wants to try to slow spin or kick. Kick is his choice. Tagged it pretty square. And he's going to get a nice roll behind the nine again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. There's one ball that he looks at like, how fortunate was that? <laughs> he's smiling. Two consecutive fairly remote events, Josh getting behind the nine to begin with, and then now kicking and getting behind the nine again. Oh, that was a worthy effort. Now Josh can slowly play the five by the seven to the side rail, just going forward, I think. Play the cue ball on the side rail and let the five just get to the end rail, bouncing off that long rail. I think it gets the snooker pretty easy to do, too. You're just kind of rolling your ball. Just got to cut it a little bit. He's queuing downward. Is he going for the cross corner? I don't know. This is kind of the shot I was talking about, but instead of hitting it down between the 7-9, cut it a little more mm -hmm. past the side and let it bounce behind the 7 to the end rail and let the cue ball just lay on the end rail. Should be up behind the 6 here, or maybe behind the 7. We'll see. Ooh, this is going to be lethal. Oh, very nice. Yeah, your uh, savvy experience suggests that behind the seven was a better route for the safety last uh, last inning for filler. Yeah, and the problem with it is just a safety. You're not you don't shoot very often. You know, it's not something you, you're usually looking for. Uh, something that has a little more of a pattern to it yeah. than you're used to yeah. doing, right? So, right. did he get us? Did he get away with this to where he can't make this? This is close. And if he has to slow spin this in with like right English, and then you don't get position with an angle. Yeah, you, you get long and shot. straight. Yeah. Okay, he got a little angle. Still, yeah. he has missed a couple of these in this match from this distance with when he's got to work the rock. And every one of them's been fat. He did overcut one earlier that was a cut shot. This is where the open bridge to me I don't use as much. See, see how weak the cue ball was too, though, Mark. Yeah. That's where I was really taught to close bridge from that distance right there. Well, the wheels have come off now for sure. And I kind of feel maybe Jesus just hasn't uh, been in tournament action here maybe the last Perhaps, but the 10-foot or two, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that doesn't help me. It's easy to, I know how it feels to get out of here on this thing. You can just look hideous. I do think it suits him, though, overall. Once he does get a little more time, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, clearly the kid can play fantastic pool. He just didn't play it here. Look at that bridge. That's a long one. Ten four. 
Filler is made the hill at 10. So we head to rack 15. Jesus will be breaking. Larry Spinelli up in Cincinnati, you still tuned in? I hope so. Always good to have Larry along. He normally comes here. Minor health issues this year, but he's tuned in at home. have the one ball freeze to the cue ball. <laughs> now what you want to do is gunfight every rack with filler. Yeah. He may be able to hit downward on this, kind of shooting in the direction of the five with some draw. Mm -hmm. And try and go to the rail and then spin the cue ball back up to a couple rails by the six. I kind of like this. See how he's aiming at the five kind of? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he tried to get it to take as best he could. It's a little bit of gambling, of course. And it came out okay. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. a scary shot because you don't want to hit too much of the one because you don't want the one moving too much to the rail and back up or something like that. So it's a, it's a lot of judgment. Efren's pretty incredible at all those types of shots. And again, nothing you'll ever practice hardly. <laughs> <laughs> but should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just kind of overall knowledge makes him so good at everything, I think, whether he practices it or not. Swish, oh, swisher. Nice there speed Filler. there. He was going to get separation no matter what. Well, he doesn't get enough credit on that kicking game anyways, and not talking about just making them here and there, but just uh, a lot of nice routes usually. I think Filler's ready. You know, he'd be happy to get this match over with. I think if you asked him, he'd tell you that you know, I just wasn't quite myself the entire match, it looked like. All right, just maybe two inches on the cue ball here, maybe three. Oh, he could had to stun it. Surprised he went fuller there, to be honest with you. Because, you, like, a lot of times you just want to get back past the side right yeah. here to cut the six. You don't want to go all the way back down. Yeah. And that creates this more often, too, whenever you get fuller on the ball. That was surprising to me, the position he played on Every, the five. Everything about it. Because, well, you would never hit it hard enough to go scratch. I mean, even if you yeah. hit it fat, you know, and you just want to get past the 10. You don't need to be straight in on the six. I yeah. Mean, straight in is not even proper, really. But, that was, yeah. yeah, just a little bit carefree. Like I said, is uh, his biggest fan, and, of course, I'm sure someone he practices with a lot, Pia, out here. When's the last time we saw that? No, never. She always sits off to the side in the stands and uh, uh, sometimes even makes a little comments and positive, like, hey, you got this, let's go, you know. And, and she's a good player herself. She's at the World Championship. I saw Kelly Fisher had made that. I think Allison Fisher made the finals round. Yeah, and Atlantic City has gotten a lot of pool this year. I think they had some tap things there with the leagues and, of course, the U.S. Open. And now the Ladies World Championships. So. 10-5 is our score. Filler to break.
It's a 9 and 5 right behind the 1. 9's tracking. Scored it. Here comes the 1 ball down here. Not good news for Jesus Atencio. Yeah, that's right. Rhett Butler texts in that Filler just switched to the Revo recently. He was playing with a Z3 shaft, which is a low deflection wood shaft. He knows, and that, thank you for the input. Yeah, he may have to play a really uh, a touchy shot here. Only because the four, getting on the three properly is important. That's the shot I was talking about. One rail between the seven, eight. Really nice. Good hit. Yeah, that's that uh, commitment at impact, right? Not quivering at impact. Make the ball throw nicely, and that's where the cue ball checks the best. Okay, good options here for sure. You could draw over behind the seven off one cushion. You could just pinch it there because he's close to the six. We're going to lose Jesus Atencio, but now we're set up for the final eight, it looks like, Mark. Yeah, nice way to close out the match with a break and run here. And that wasn't, you know, vintage filler, but it was pretty quality performance there. What was the TPA, Jeremy? Do you see? 857. Okay, not hideous. That was a respectable, high level play. You know, we carry them at such a high standard, right? <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, tomorrow at 1, it's Van Boning and Shaw, 3.30, Gomez, Gorst, 7 p.m., Cortez and Fortunsky. And it's going to be a session and filler. This has been an AccuStats video production, and the rebroadcast or republication without AccuStats express written permission is prohibited. That is our time. Drive safely, and so long for just a while.